Have you ever pondered who the first mighty man on earth was? As recorded in the Bible, it was Nimrod, a man whose story is as fascinating as it is mysterious. In the biblical narrative, Nimrod emerges as a significant yet enigmatic figure. His story begins in the book of Genesis, where he is introduced as a descendant of Noah's son, Ham. Born into the lineage of Cush, Nimrod's story is woven into the tapestry of the post-flood world. Despite his prominence in the scriptures, the details surrounding Nimrod's early life are scarce. The Bible doesn't give us a detailed account of his childhood, his upbringing, or the events that shaped him into the man he would become. This scarcity of information only adds to the enigma that surrounds this ancient figure. What we do know, however, is that Nimrod grew to become a mighty man on earth. The Bible describes him as a mighty hunter before the Lord, a phrase that indicates his great power and prowess. His strength and ambition led him to establish and rule over major ancient cities, including Babel, Erech and Akkad, among others. Yet Nimrod's story is not just one of power and ambition. It is also a story of rebellion. According to the Bible, Nimrod's kingdom was established in defiance of God's command for humanity to spread out and fill the earth. Instead, he sought to consolidate power and create a name for himself. This defiance, this rebellion against the divine order, is a constant theme in Nimrod's story. It paints a picture of a man who was not just physically mighty, but also possessed a formidable will, one that often led him to challenge the established norms and directives of his time. The story of Nimrod is a captivating tale that straddles the line between history and myth, between human ambition and divine decree. It invites us to delve deeper into the pages of the Bible to unravel the mysteries surrounding this intriguing figure. Despite the sparse details, Nimrod's story is a captivating tale of power, ambition and rebellion. Nimrod's rise to power is a tale of audacity and determination. As the son of Cush, Nimrod was born into a world still reeling from the Great Flood, yet he was not one to be daunted by the aftermath of such devastation. Instead, he saw opportunity in the chaos, a chance to carve out a new world order. Nimrod became a mighty one on Earth, a title bestowed upon him not just for his physical prowess, but for his leadership and strategic acumen. He was a man of action, not content with the world as it was, but driven by a vision of what it could be. With a heart ablaze with ambition and a mind sharp with wisdom, he set about establishing his kingdom. The land of Shinar, a fertile expanse in the heart of Mesopotamia, became the canvas upon which Nimrod painted his dreams of power. Here he built the first great cities of the post-Diluvian world, including Babel, Erech, Akkad and Kalne. His kingdom was one of innovation and progress, a beacon of civilization in a world still finding its feet after the flood's upheaval. Yet, Nimrod's legend transcends his role as a king and builder. He was renowned as a great hunter before the Lord, a reputation mentioned in Genesis 10.9. This title speaks volumes about his character. Nimrod was not just a ruler, he was a protector, a provider. He faced the wilderness and its beasts, defending his people and ensuring their survival. His hunting prowess was not just a testament to his physical strength, but also to his courage, his tenacity and his will. It was these qualities that made him a mighty one on earth, a leader who could inspire loyalty and admiration, a king who could wield power not just through force, but through respect and reverence. Nimrod's prowess and ambition led him to become the first powerful king on earth, but his story doesn't end there. His tale of audacity and determination continues as we delve deeper into his life, his accomplishments and the legacy he left behind. Nimrod's ambition didn't stop at being a mighty king, he had greater aspirations. His dreams stretched beyond the horizon, reached beyond the stars. He sought to etch his name in the annals of time with an audacious feat, the construction of the Tower of Babel. This wasn't merely a tower, it was a monument to human arrogance, a testament to self-sufficiency. In essence, it was a bold declaration of independence from God, an architectural marvel that would pierce the heavens and put man on par with the divine. The Bible does not directly name Nimrod as the mastermind of this endeavor, yet many scholars argue that such a grandiose project bore the unmistakable hallmark of his ambition. However, this monumental undertaking did not go unnoticed. The divine gaze turned towards this tower with its head in the clouds, the audacity of mankind, led perhaps by Nimrod, to construct a tower of such scale and intent 
did not sit well with the heavens. It was a challenge to divine authority, an affront to the cosmic order. The response was swift and decisive. In an act of divine intervention, God decided to put an end to this unified rebellion. The once unified language of humanity, the common tongue that had enabled such coordinated effort, was suddenly muddled. A cacophony of languages emerged, leading to confusion and chaos. The unity that had driven the construction of the tower was shattered. People could no longer understand each other, and they scattered across the face of the earth, taking their new languages with them. This grand tower, intended to be a symbol of human might and unity, became instead a symbol of hubris and division. It stood unfinished, a stark reminder of the consequences of challenging divine authority. In his hubris, Nimrod challenged the very heavens, a decision that would have far-reaching consequences. The Tower of Babel serves as a timeless reminder of the perils of overreaching ambition and the folly of challenging the divine. Every story has its climax, and for Nimrod it was a downfall as monumental as his rise. Nimrod's downfall is shrouded in mystery and speculation. The Bible, our main source of information about him, falls silent on his demise. It leaves us with an enigma, a puzzle that has been the subject of many theories, interpretations and legends over the centuries. Some believe that Nimrod met his end at the hands of the patriarch Shem, the son of Noah. According to this narrative, Shem killed Nimrod in retaliation for his rebellion against God. The Talmud, an ancient Jewish text, adds more color to this theory, suggesting that Nimrod was cut into pieces, with each piece sent to a different city as a stark warning against idolatry and defiance of God. Others propose a different end for Nimrod. They suggest that his downfall was not physical, but rather symbolic, represented by the scattering of the people and languages at the Tower of Babel. In this interpretation, Nimrod's power and influence waned as people spread across the earth, their tongues confused, their unity shattered. The mighty king, once revered and feared, was reduced to a mere mortal, his supremacy stripped away. Then there are those who claim Nimrod was transformed into a beast by God as punishment for his rebellion. This theory, found in some early Christian writings, portrays Nimrod's downfall as a metamorphosis, a vivid symbol of the consequences of challenging the divine order. Each theory, each legend paints a different picture of Nimrod's downfall, yet all agree on one point. Nimrod's end was a direct result of his rebellion against God. His defiance, his ambition, his quest for power all led to his fall. Whether he was slain, scattered or transformed, his downfall was as dramatic and memorable as his rise. Nimrod's life, filled with power and rebellion, ended in an enigma, much like how it began. Nimrod, the rebel son of Cush, left an indelible mark on the annals of biblical history. We've journeyed through the life of Nimrod, a figure as enigmatic as he is influential. His story, though shrouded in mystery, is embedded in the ancient texts of the Bible, a testament to his power and the legacy he left behind. Nimrod's rise to power was nothing short of remarkable. From the humble son of Cush to the first mighty king on earth, his story is one of ambition, fearlessness and relentless pursuit of power. His reign saw the construction of some of the most awe-inspiring structures of the ancient world, including the infamous Tower of Babel. This was a feat of human ingenuity and cooperation, a testament to Nimrod's leadership, but also a symbol of his defiance against divine authority. The Tower of Babel, a monument to mankind's ambition, was also the catalyst for Nimrod's downfall. In their pursuit of greatness, Nimrod and his people attempted to reach the heavens, an act of defiance that led to divine intervention. The people were scattered, their languages confused, and Nimrod's empire crumbled. Nimrod's story serves as a stark reminder of the consequences of unchecked ambition and the perils of defying divine authority. His rise and fall underscore the biblical theme of the tension between human aspirations and divine will. Yet despite his downfall, Nimrod's influence is undeniable. His legacy is interwoven with the fabric of ancient history, his name synonymous with power and rebellion. He is a figure who continues to captivate our imagination, a symbol of human ambition and the potential for greatness, but also a cautionary tale of the consequences of overreaching. From the first mighty king on earth to a cautionary tale of ambition and rebellion, Nimrod's story continues to intrigue and instruct us today.